The next thing I want to show you is what an array of colors you can make by using black, white, yellow, and red. And of course, the results you get are going to be dependent on which black you use, which red, and which yellow. And you can also further vary the results by using a cool red and a warm red, plus a cool yellow and a warm yellow. There's a multitude of ways to vary this palette up. And I know that it has a name called the Zorn palette, named for a Swiss artist who uh, used four variations of a black, white, yellow, and red in his oil paintings some years back. But I first encountered this on a trip to New York City once, about 10 years ago, when I wandered into a Chelsea gallery and they had a show up of very large scale abstracts where the painter, a woman named Judith Murray, had limited her palette to different reds, different yellows, different blacks, and white. And the results were so astoundingly gorgeous that I spent the next year playing with just those colors. So again, I have my white, my light gray, my darker gray, and black. I've got a, a primary red color and a cad yellow medium, and this is a mixture of both of these two. So we're going to do the same thing. And this, this is a red that kind of tends toward a, a, a kind of a candy pink. We're going to do the light gray with it. Then we're going to go to the dark gray. Then to our black. Then we're going to do our yellow. I got a bunch of black in there. So this is going to come out a little grayer because I didn't clean my palette knife off well enough. But that's OK. Make it more interesting. We're going to take our yellow and do our darker gray with it. We're starting to get kind of a green, a greenish gray yellow. And then we're going to take a little bit of black and use our yellow. Again, sort of a greeny black. Now let's take the mixture. First we'll add a little white to it. So we're getting a lighter kind of orange. Then we'll take our light gray and our mixture, sort of a peachy gray. Then our darker gray and our mixture, trying to do equal amounts, which I didn't right there. And then our black with the mixture. Now you get the fun could really begin. You can make, again, different generations of this by taking different combinations. Let's take a little bit of this red, and I'm just going to do this arbitrarily, and take this peach color and see what happens. You get kind of more of a rose. And then let's add a little black to it, just for fun. You get a darker kind of pinkish gray, but it'll really change up if we add a little white to part of it. And you can see what you get. Let's try some of this straight yellow with maybe some of this sort of green gray yellow. Kind of lighten that up. Then maybe take a little white. Go light with it and see what happens. So again, you're creating this array of related colors that all are going to go together. Um, and you could, can, you could do this for hours. Actually, I could fill this entire table with freezer paper and mix paint up, but you wouldn't be able to see it within the confines of the camera. But um, this, again, is a really good exercise for you to do to see how many colors you can come up with that you love out of using really very few. And again, vary the results by using different yellows, different reds, and different blacks. So this is a better view of some of the colors that I just mixed up with the red and yellow black and white exercise. Uh, and as I say, it's just a drop in the bucket of the possibilities that you can mix up with just these few colors.